we're going to be we're going to be adding a strong base and a weak acid. What happens when an acid and a base go together? Neutralize. They neutralize. Neutralize. And here's the deal: it doesn't matter whether it's a strong acid and a strong base, strong acid and a weak base, strong base and a weak acid or a week and a week. It doesn't matter. It will neutralize. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write the reaction. That's like your priority reaction. We neutralize everything we can. And then if there's stuff left over, we see what happens. So here I'm going to draw a single arrow. What's the first product? Okay, or let's say water, right? Yeah, that's a good one. And then the other one is certainly sodium. Sodium, blah, 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 blah. C2. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Okay? Now, one thing that might help looking at this is to kind of do a net ionic equation. Which of, do, which of these two chemicals break up all the way? Na and OH. Na and OH. So Na plus OH minus. Does this break up? No. No, it's a weak acid. So we have to write it together. Does water break up? No, silly rabbit. It's not even an acid. It never is. And then does this break up? Yes. It's a sodium salt, so it does break up. So what can we cancel out? The sodium. The sodium. Surprise. Sodium doesn't end up being in there. Okay. So we take the sodium out. And this is what we've got. Okay. Now, because this is a single arrow, are we going to do a rice box? No. No, a rice box is new this year. It's about equilibrium. This is back to good old-fashioned stoichiometry in Chem 1. So, we got to figure out moles. What is 10 mils times 0.2 molar? What's 10 times 0.2? Let's do 10 two. times 0 0.2. Two. It's 2. So we have 2 millimoles of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to write it right under the sodium hydroxide. Okay? How many millimoles of our acid do we have? 4. 400 times 0 0.01 is going to be 4. Just 4 millimoles? Yeah. Millimoles. Now, which is our limiting reactant? Uh, OH. OH. It is. And this one's easy to tell without even doing any calculating because it's a one to one ratio, so it is the smaller one. If it was a two to three ratio, we got to be careful. So, what is the definition of a limiting reactant? It, get, it gets used up all the way. So, every single bit of those two millimoles is going to react. So that's going to go down to zero. When this uses point, uh, two millimoles, how much of this will get used? Two. That's exactly right. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So we actually had an excess amount. So, so two get used up, so we end up with two millimoles left over. Do we care about water? No. no. Okay. How much of this, this started with zero, how much of this got made? Two. two, right. It's a one to one to one ratio. So two millimoles got used, two millimoles got used, two millimoles got made. Okay, so now we have a solution that has some of this in it and some of this in it. What kind of solution is that? It's the one we just talked about yesterday. It starts with a B. It's a buffer. Because we have a weak acid and some of the conjugate base. So now, we don't know pH, right? We have to do the second part of the problem. So we always neutralize first. One, neutralize. And then, if you have anything left over that's going to dissociate, then you do your rice box. So I'm going to start with that weak acid. Acid reactions are easy to write, so I'm going to have my acetic acid. Double arrow now, because it's going to form an equilibrium.
this is going to be, now, 2 millimoles, what's going to be my total solution? Uh, point, nope. Actually, 410 so milliliters, point right? Four, yeah. So let's divide by 410 in both cases. So 2 divided by 410 is 0.0049. This is 0 0.0049 molar. And this will be the same thing, right? So, and that's important. You cannot work, well, yeah. We work in molarities. Let's just say that. And so now this is actually back to what we've been doing, right? Yep. Not too bad. So this is a minus x a plus x, a plus x, 0 0.0049 minus x, which we hope to ignore, and just call that 0 0.0049. This is an x, and this should be 0 0.0049 plus x, but we hope to ignore, right? Mm -hmm. And so last but not least, we set up our Ka. Ka is going to be H plus times our acetate ion over acetic acid. So we're going to plug in 0.0049x over 0.0049. That math is really easy, right? Yeah, baby food. Those are going to cancel out, and our x is going to equal to our Ka value, which if you look it up in Appendix D is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay? That X represents H, so we're going to have a pH of, what's it going to start with? Negative. No. Four. Oh, wait, sorry. It's going to start with a 4, and then it's going to be something something, right? So the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 is, I get 4.74. Yeah, no, I got 4.6. Good. You got what? Nothing. And that's how you do it. Okay, so what's interesting is if you take a strong base and react it with a weak acid, you can actually make a buffer if all your strong base disappears. If your strong base remains, then your solution's basic. The strong thing dominates everything. Is that cool? Very. Okay, thanks.